Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today I'm gonna show you a lot of cool stuff that you can use to package your PCBs and ship them out without risking damage or anything like electrostatic shock. Now, if you're a freelancer, maybe you're a new designer, maybe you've got the entrepreneurial bug like me and you wanna start your own design firm, one thing that you may have to do is take possession of a client's PCBs, and once you go to ship it back to them, you're gonna to need to make sure that you have the right packaging material. So I've got a whole box full of stuff I'm gonna show you guys, and it's got a lot of great stuff in here. You can get all of this stuff on Amazon, eBay, Alibaba, Uline. Uh, there's all sorts of places you can get it, and it's really important to make this investment in yourself because it's gonna make you look much more professional. So that's what we're gonna look at today. Let's go ahead and get started. So when you get your PCBs back from a manufacturer, they're probably gonna come packaged in something kind of like this. So we've got an electrostatic bag here. We've got a bunch of packaging in here that's gonna protect the PCBs. And of course, they're probably gonna be in a box with a bunch of bubble wrap in here. So to make sure that you keep your boards uh, protected from static electricity, first thing you need is static shielding bags. These are from Uline. You can get all sorts of different uh, types of shielding bags from other companies. So these ones come, essentially like this. Uh, they just open up like this. And these are the kind of uh, shielding bags that you could seal with a vacuum sealer. Another version of these types of bags comes with like a little Ziploc seal here. You can seal these up just by hand. And you just put the PCBs in here and seal them up and they'll be good to go. If they are maybe a little more sensitive, you're worried about a part falling off, you can use some special bubble wrap to make sure that they're wrapped up and protected and they're gonna be able to withstand any bumps along the way. So one thing that you should put into these bags, especially if you have moisture sensitive components, are some desiccant packets. So these are desiccant packets. And if you've ever gotten a piece of clothing or maybe like a leather bag, or you've gotten a box uh, that has some moisture sensitive part in it, it's gonna contain one of these packets. So these packets contain a silica desiccant and a desiccant essentially absorbs water. It absorbs moisture from the air. And the idea here is that it absorbs into the desiccant rather than absorbing onto any sensitive components on the circuit board. So when you buy these desiccant packets, they normally come in a big sealed container. It can be like a five gallon bucket, maybe come in a smaller container if you order a smaller amount. And you will just keep that sealed at all times, only open it up when you need to grab some of these and put them into your packaging with your PCBs. One thing you'll also note is if you ever order components that come in these electrostatic packages, they will include some of these desiccant packets if those components are also moisture sensitive. So keep that in mind. So previously I mentioned bubble wrap, but there's a special type of bubble wrap that you should use to wrap up PCBs because some bubble wrap is not electrostatic shielded. It can actually accumulate static electricity and because it accumulates static electricity that can then transfer to your PCB and it could damage components. So there is special bubble wrap, which is anti-static bubble wrap. This is anti-static bubble wrap, comes in large bubble format, comes in small bubble format. You can buy it in big rolls, cut it out to the shape that you need. You can wrap up PCBs in it and put it inside of this shielding. And then you can also wrap up the shielding itself with this bubble wrap and then put that into a box. And that's gonna give your PCBs some extra padding and protection for while they're being shipped and that way they won't be damaged in transit. One other thing that's also pretty useful for packing PCBs and storing components are these baggies. Now, I don't normally buy these baggies in large quantities because we get so much stuff received from manufacturers that, you know, for projects that we're working on, and all of the extra components will come packaged in these little baggies. So usually if you're ordering from a manufacturer and you have extra parts, they're gonna maybe wrap them up in some bubble wrap, or maybe they'll wrap them up in anti-static shielding. They might put them in these baggies. I always like to hold on to these baggies just in case I need them. Okay, continuing with packaging to protect PCBs and even components. You can actually get electrostatic protected boxes. So these little boxes here come with some special foam and this special foam 
is actually electrostatic protected. So this is a resistant to electrostatic and it will not accumulate static charge on it that could then damage components. So this particular box is being used to protect a couple of chips that I have here and store these. Now these were chips were actually shipped in this box and I just keep it wrapped up like this and then I keep it inside a little piece of electrostatic shielding. And you always wanna make sure that if you buy one of these padded boxes, that it specifically uses electrostatic safe foam. And if you go onto uh, like a website like Uline, or if you go to another industrial supplier, they'll be able to supply you with some special anti-static boxes that are padded. So these boxes are really good if you have to ship a large board, maybe something that's bulky that has a big heat sink or a big connector on it or something like that. If there's ever any chance that that part might get damaged or come off in shipping, it doesn't hurt to put it into a electrostatic padded box. You will notice actually on this box that there's a little sticker here. These stickers can actually be purchased in big rolls, and these stickers contain an electrostatic warning on them. So these are really great for sealing up these types of packages, assuming that you don't need vacuum sealing. You can also just stick them right on the outside of one of these electrostatic bags. You can just peel these off and put them on whatever you need to put them on to give someone a very clear warning that you have an ESD sensitive device inside of that packaging. So one thing I don't have with me in the room is a vacuum sealer. So vacuum sealers can be used with these electrostatic bags to fully completely seal them and give you an, a nice airtight seal. That way, if you put some desiccant in here with your components or with your PCB, what that desiccant is gonna do is it's going to dry out all of the air that's inside the bag. And then once this is sealed, that's gonna prevent any new humid air from entering inside of the bag. So these bags are not just electrostatic shielding, they're also a moisture shield. So that's important to note. Not all vacuum sealers are gonna be appropriate for working with these types of bags. Now, I've seen discussion in some forums that you can actually use like a home vacuum sealer that you might use for food on these bags. I've never confirmed that. If anybody that's watching has confirmed that and has actually used one of those vacuum sealers on these types of bags, please let us know in the comments because I would love to get one of those vacuum sealers for myself. Some of the vacuum sealers that are appropriate for these bags can actually be a bit expensive and that's because they can be very large. And that is usually the case when you need to seal up a package that is like this size. You can see the size of this bag and the size of this bag, obviously very different. These bags here can also uh, seal up like this with a Ziploc seal, but you could also get these very large bags that need to seal up with a vacuum seal. Okay, so you've probably noticed, I've mentioned several times that all of this stuff can be used for PCBs as well as components. And I even showed you an example with this little padded box. So some components will come packaged in all sorts of different ways. And not all components are gonna be electrostatic sensitive or uh, moisture sensitive. So a good example is like these passive RF components. So these little isolators here, you can see I've cut a little section out of this, but these isolators are totally passive. Um, they're not ESD sensitive and they're really not uh, uh, sensitive to moisture. But you can see here, they've still been packaged with some of this, uh, this bubble wrap and some of this special foam. Sometimes when you get packaging and you're gonna use it for PCBs, it will actually double as component packaging. So that's important because oftentimes if you're running your own manufacturing for clients or if you are just ordering boards for a project, you may have to consign parts to the manufacturer. And so when you consign those parts, you either have to order them direct from the distributor, they get shipped to the manufacturer in packaging, or if you have the components, you may need to package them yourself. So if you package components yourself, then you're gonna ship them off to the assembler. The assembler is gonna assemble everything for you and then send back the finished boards. So the packaging that we've presented here is also appropriate for components. So keep that in mind. This packaging that you invest in is actually gonna do double duty, work for both PCBAs and components. All right, everybody. So if you wanna get any of the packaging that I've presented here, we're not gonna put any links in the description because as I said earlier, you can go onto Amazon, you can go onto eBay, Alibaba, some other online sites, and you can find all of this different packaging that we've shown here. Also, I know I showed some Uline products. This is not an official endorsement by myself or Altium of Uline. They are one industrial supplier. There are many more that can provide you with similar products. So keep that in mind if you wanna make this investment. Now, the investment in these uh, packaging materials in terms of cost is actually not that big. 
About $100 will get you a small amount of this packaging material and it'll last you a while. So consider making this investment in yourself in order to not just protect your customers' PCBAs, but also to make yourself look much more professional. All right, everybody, that's all I've got for you today. And thank you so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. And then last but not least, don't forget to call your manufacturer, folks. Yeah.